Um, we're going to call the roll. Would you please, sir? Yeah. Chairman Carney? I'm here. Uh, Member Davis? Member Fernandez Ketchum? Here. Member Freed? Present. Member Golden? Here. Member Sue? Here. Member Shaw? Here. We have a form, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, thank you very much. Um, I want to welcome first members and the staff and all of our guests today. We have two special guests here today. We have the Commissioner of DEP, that's what's at the end of the sitting over here. And I've just met this uh, the Deputy Commissioner, Pam Elardo. Am I correct? That's correct. All right. Pam, it's a pleasure to have you here too. Well, uh, the agenda is short today, but we have what I think is going to be a very interesting presentation. Before we get to that, though, uh, the members have had a chance to, uh, I hope, had a chance to review the minutes from the meeting of January 26th. Um, are there any corrections for the minutes? No. Hearing none, may I have a motion please to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Resolution approved. Uh, the next order of business is the presentation. Fiscal year 2019 rate and billing policy proposals. Mr. Commissioner, are you going to do that? Chair Carney, thank you very much. Board members, uh, welcome. Board officers, welcome. Uh, so I'm Vincent Sapienza, DEP Commissioner, and uh, we're going to walk through today the uh, capital and expense needs for the system and for fiscal 19 and the proposed rate for the coming year. Just a little bit about DEP. Uh, we are the water and sewer utility for New York City. We, on the water supply side, deliver a billion gallons a day of drinking water to everyone in the city and about a million people in uh, several upstate communities. Uh, water is delivered to essentially every building in the city through 7,000 miles of water mains. We have a 2,000 square mile watershed, uh, protected lands in, in several upstate counties that can hold about 580 billion gallons of water in the reservoirs. On the wastewater treatment side, uh, after the water is used by New Yorkers, we treat 1.2 billion gallons a day at, at one of 14 wastewater treatment plants, and that water is collected through 7,500 miles of sewers. There's just a little bit of background um, on, on the drinking water side. Uh, by, by many measures, we have the best drinking water in, in the country, and um, we, we do significant testing. We take about 600,000 uh, tests per year, and on the physical, chemical, organic, and microbial parameters, we're all well within uh, federal and state guidelines. On the wastewater treatment side, there's been tremendous progress. The investments that uh, New Yorkers have made over the last, uh, I guess, generation or so, these are just uh, harbor water quality, and it's, it's a little tough to see, but these are fecal coliform counts, and red is bad, means you had, we had high bacteria. Back in 1985, the Hudson River, Lower Bay, East River, but thanks to increases in, in wastewater treatment and, and controlling compliance, sewer overflows, much better today. In fact, many parts of the harbor meet swimming standards. There's a few little areas uh, it's tough to see, but uh, like Flushing Bay, um, Haddigan Basin, Coney Island Creek, Newtown Creek, Wines Canal, we still have some challenges, and, and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So just a little quick overview of our uh, operations and maintenance needs for the coming year. So O&M uh, is the, the non-capital side of the, the, the budget. Um, as, as I mentioned before, we're not only uh, maintaining assets in New York City, but we have the, the large watershed area, the, the, the Croton watershed, and then the Catskill Mill over watershed north of the city. Most of our expenses, the major parts, uh, go, go to electricity. We use a lot of power at our facilities. Our wastewater treatment plants are the third largest energy user uh, in the city. Chemicals to treat the water and the wastewater. Uh, personnel expenses, the salaries of our 5,800 employees and their benefits. And then property taxes, about $170 million a year in property taxes for lands owned by the city and upstate watershed. Uh, in FY19, we have about 18 million in new investments on the water supply and wastewater operating divisions, and nine million for engineering design. Which is new. And so southeast on Park. Overall, um, it looks like from our current outlook for spending this year, total O&M was going to be about uh, 1.403 billion for 
19, we're projected at 1.467 billion, about four and a half percent increase. A good chunk of that goes goes really to, to two things. Um, one is the filtration avoidance determination. In, in this past December, uh, we negotiated an agreement with New York State and with EPA. Uh, our Watersheds in the Catskill and Delaware are untreated so, uh, source water. Like most municipalities across the country, they have to filter their water. We don't because we have protected lands, but the state and EPA insisted on certain investments. So some of the money is going to that. And then the other thing is um, just a, a relook at how we, we allocate uh, capital versus expense money to certain things that cost us less than $35,000, which is the capital threshold. So if we're Fixing a catch basin and it would cost less than $35,000, those are now being spent. So there's been some shifts there. Um, that's the OM overview. On the capital side, uh, we have a 10 year capital plan of $19.1 billion and just slices up the pie where the money goes to. Uh, water main construction and sewer construction, just making sure that those assets uh, are working reliably. Uh, it's about five billion dollars of the 19 billion water and sewer mains. State of good repair, making sure our existing assets from our reservoirs to our wastewater treatment plants uh, are, are well operated and uh, the, the, the assets there are replaced when necessary. Uh, dependability is mostly for our water supply, making sure that we can deliver the, the water from the reservoirs down into the city so it's tunnels and aqueducts and dams, electrical and mechanical equipment. Southeast Queens, so big chunks of Southeast Queens have been long underserved by the wastewater system. There are no storm sewers in large chunks of Southeast Queens. People have suffered there for, for a couple of generations now. Uh, and, and we want to make sure that we are providing them with equivalent services to everybody else in the city. So we have about $1.7 billion in the 10-year plan to build out that storm sewer system. And then finally, about 21% of our capital budget goes towards unfunded federal and state mandates, uh, a bunch of things to, to meet laws that have been passed uh, to, to reduce combined sewer overflows uh, and, and do water quality improvements. So about 21% of our budget goes to um, This is some of the big capital projects that we're doing and, and uh, the, the Delaware Aqueduct Repair. So uh, the Delaware Aqueduct, I'll put this up just back quickly. Here's the Delaware Aqueduct, um, and there's a West Branch and East Branch that comes down into um, all the way down to, to Kensico Reservoir. Uh, it was built in the 1940s. The Delaware Aqueduct itself, by the way, is the longest continuous tunnel in the world at 85 miles, which is an interesting fact. Uh, but part of the Delaware Aqueduct, where it goes under the Hudson River, it's about a thousand feet below the Hudson River. Um, it leaks have formed, and we've known about these leaks for quite a while. But Doing a repair of that tunnel is very challenging because half of the city's water supply comes through the Delaware Aqueduct. You can't just shut down the tunnel to get in there to make repairs. Uh, so what we came up with was a concept of building a parallel tunnel, that's the yellow line, uh, next to the leaking section. That work is underway. We've already got two shafts, one at, uh, at Newburgh and one at Wappingers. One is a 900-foot shaft, the other is a 700-foot shaft. And we have a tunnel boring machine now carving through the two and a half mile trek uh, to build that tunnel. So that one is on the way, it's about 1.2 million dollars. The other thing we, we, we have significant uh, investments in is green infrastructure. So I showed that map a little bit before on harbor water quality, how it's improving. There are still some water bodies in the city that due to overflows that, that were just designed into the sewer system um, years ago, uh, we, we are trying to keep stormwater out of the sewers as much as possible, and green infrastructure is just a great way to do it. We've built more than 4,000 now of these what we call curbside rain gardens. And the intent really is instead of rainwater hitting the street, running down into a catch basin into the sewer, just having nature soak that up. And these have worked really well. Uh, we, we've given money to public schools, to public housing uh, facilities to, to green up their lands as well. And we've been able to keep a good chunk of, of Storm water out of the sewer system and reduce overflows that way. Southeast Queens, I talked about a little bit uh, before. They, they've had flooding in, in many areas for a long, long time, and uh, we're putting in large sewers, large storm sewers that they've never had before. Uh, 
just some some examples here. That work is underway. Got a big uh, capital improvement plan. City's so water tunnel number three. So uh, New York City's had two main water tunnels bringing water in from Hellview Reservoir into the city. City tunnel number one is 100 years old. City tunnel number two is 80 years old. They've been in continuous service since they were put in because we can't take them out of service because the city needs that water. Uh, so for the last 40 years, we've been building city water tunnel number three, and it's partially complete. Water is going to the Bronx and Manhattan. Uh, but we have about $660 million in our 10-year capital plan to complete the second stage of city tunnel number three to bring water into Brooklyn and Queens. When city tunnel number three is completed in the mid 2020s, uh, we can then go and dewater city tunnel number one for the first time in 100 years and see what it looks like. Uh, these are long term control plans for our combined sewer overflows. Again, the city's sewer system was built as a combined system. It was built to a certain capacity, and when there's a heavy rain, there can be overflows of untreated sewage into local waterways. So, this is a mandate from, from the federal government and uh, from the state to reduce those overflows and at some point eliminate them. And we've got $1.9 billion allocated in our 10-year capital plan to do that. Uh, there, there are certain water bodies that the state wants us to, to pay specific attention to, and those are listed there. We're, we're doing things like building large storage tanks, storage tunnels to retain what would have otherwise overflowed during wet weather, hold that water, and then when the storm is over, have it pumped to a wastewater treatment plant entry. On the customer service side, uh, we have 840,000 uh, customers. Essentially, every building in the city uh, pays a water bill, and we focus a lot on customer service in recent years. We have essentially universal metering. Almost every building now has a, an automated water meter, and that's helped a lot in reduce the number of disputes. We, we were down about 74% on, on folks who complain about their bills since 2009. At our call center, uh, Deputy Commissioner Sign Phones Group has done a great job. Waiting time now, you, you call with the concerns less than one minute of wait time. Uh, estimated bills that were 17% in 2009, they are only 3%. Again, because of automated uh, reading, we can tell you what your, your account is to, to essentially be at. Um, and just another point out, J.D. Power and Associates, who does these consumer surveys, right? Uh, P number one in customer service for water utilities in the Northeast, which is nice on there. Um, just on, on operating highlights, We've done really well uh, on, on water and, and sewer main maintenance. On, on water main breaks, I mean, you, you hear in the news there's a water main break as well, but uh, DEP is actually much lower on average than, than national. nationally. Nationally, uh, most municipalities are at about 25 water main breaks per 100 miles of water main per year. We're at about seven, so we do a really good job there. Catch basin complaints, people come in, my catch basin is backed up, and I've got flooding on my, my block, and those are down 16% year over year. We made a really big effort to do more inspections and cleaning. And street cave-ins, which can be caused by a collapsed sewer or collapsed water main, those are, those are down 9% year over year as well. So um, I'm gonna talk now about our uh, investment needs and debt, and uh, I think everybody knows DEP funds our, our capital projects through tax-exempt municipal bonds. We currently have $31 billion in debt. That's the, the red line here. And uh, here's the scale for the debt, $31 billion. Uh, you know, one concern, obviously, is the interest rate environment. We've been fortunate over the last many years to have very low interest rates. Our bonds are highly rated and it's good rates. Uh, but the concern, I guess, over time, and I'll get to that in a minute, is increasing rates. So, here is the, the um, ask for today, is we are proposing, based upon um, our projections, uh, an increase in the water rate of 2.36%. Uh, that'll increase the typical customer's monthly bill by between $1.35 and $2.07. I'll get into those details in a little bit. But, just wanted to give a graphic of over the last 15 years or so what the water rate increases have been. And many folks remember the significant increases that were done between 2007 and, and really 2013. A lot of that went to go pay for unfunded mandates. Uh, there, were, there were significant projects that the state and, and, and EPA 
EPA require to uh, build a, a big wastewater treatment plant at Newtown Creek, to do UV disinfection on our water supply, to build the, the, the Croton water filtration plant. Um, and, and so those things really impacted the rate. But in, in the past few years, we've been able to, to keep that down. Um, and during fiscal year 17 and 18, many of you may recall, we've had 0% increases. We haven't uh, moved the needle. And a lot of that was due to not only you know good work by, by the folks at DEP and to maintain efficiency, but Mayor de Blasio returned what was called the rental payment uh, from the water system to the city's general fund. Uh, and with that elimination, we were able to, to not only keep rates at zero, but return $122 million to 664,000 uh, property owners. So for this year, uh, based upon what we see our needs being, the, the rate increase proposal is 2.36%. Uh, how was that arrived at? So we, we, we looked at a bunch of things. Um, you know, securing funding for the ongoing needs of the system, as we talked about. Um, I mentioned before interest rates, they seem to be at least in the you know, short term on, on, on short term and even up to 10 years, 10 years of approaching 3%, so we're concerned about uh, you know, going forward, borrowing needs being higher. Uh, and then you know, we want to look at having cash reserves so that going forward uh, needs that the future rate increases are, are be moderated. We don't like to see the spikes for our customers. Uh, it's it's a lower the 2.36 lower than average uh, over the last 15 years, and again, I think our folks have done good work to just make sure that we're uh, as lean as possible. Uh, and you know, yeah, the mayor's return of the rental payment has certainly continued to help even even after those two years of Europe going forward. Uh, this is just what I talked about a little bit before the. the it's been an increase over the last couple of years in the one-year rate. The 10-year is starting to, to leak up now. Uh, the black line is, is the 30-year. So we just have concern about borrowing going forward. Uh, we think over the next four years, we're going to have to borrow about $7.9 billion. I'm just concerned about what the rates may be going forward that we're going to have to pay off. Uh, Beyond the 2.36% rate increase, we just want to talk about some of the affordability programs that we're also carrying forward to help the neediest New Yorkers. The first one is uh, the Home uh, Water Assistance Program. We give a credit of $115 to, to low-income New Yorkers, primarily seniors and the disabled, and that will continue going forward. The Multifamily Assistance Program, uh, we are providing a $250 credit uh, for property owners who own multifamily buildings who agree to affordability programs. Uh, this will be capped at a $10 million uh, outlay for, for the city. We are freezing the minimum charge. I think that's the big one. So about a, a quarter of all uh, property owners don't uh, use more than 94 gallons a day. And uh, you know, primarily people in one, in one person or two person occupied uh, building. Um, 49 cents per day, so, so that rate will, will stay the same. Those folks will not see a rate increase. And then the leak repair credit, as we've done more automated uh, metering of folks, we can tell pretty quickly if there's a leak, we can notify property owners and they can get a credit. <coughs> so uh, the typical customer's monthly bill, uh, I mentioned before, between $1.35 and $2.17. So what does that look like for a typical property owner in the city? If you're a, a single family home, uh, your rate in the last few years or your, your bill in the last few years has averaged 1055 It'll now be, uh, if the rate proposal goes through, 1081 or $2.17. We, we estimate that the average single family homeowner uses approximately 80,000 gallons a year, um, slightly more than folks in, in multifamily buildings of 52,000. If you're in a one family house, you may have a, a you know, washing machine, you may have a lawn that you water. Um, but for, for those in multifamily buildings, the, the rate will the, the, the bill, the average bill for a year will go from 686 to 705, about $1.35 per month more. Uh, folks in the multifamily conservation program will see an increase of about $1.98 a month. And again, those that are using uh, the minimum amount of water, the minimum charge, will see no increase. Uh, again, just a little bit about the minimum charge. So households, again, you, you use less than 94 
uh, gallons of water per day on average. Uh, that, that's what we consider the minimum charge, $463 a year. That will stay the same. One of the things we always point out is that in New York City, almost everything costs more than the national average. Water is the one thing that, that really doesn't. And, you know, apartment rentals, you're, you're paying twice uh, what the national average is. Purchasing a, a property is, is more than double. Uh, even when you're paying for other utilities, gas and electric, you're paying almost double the national average of the folks who live in the city. But water and sewer rates are about 9% less, less than the national average. And this is just a comparison versus other 30 large big cities. Here's New York City, it's the 30 largest. And we've actually, we, for about the three year period, 2013, 14, 15, we were near the national average, but because of the, we haven't done rate increases for two years and are proposing only a minimal rate increase this year, 2.36. Later this year, we think we're gonna be about 10% under the national average. We've looked at a lot of other, these, these other municipalities and they've been increasing their rates or to increase their rates this year, generally between four and seven percent. And this is just the trends, I guess, over the last 20 years or so in the other major cities. Uh, the average is right here, again, about $1,100 a year. On average, uh, nationally, rates have gone up about six percent over the last 20 years. In New York City, our rates have gone up about 5.8 percent during, during that period. I should point out Chicago, while it seems really well, they do get subsidies from, from tax uh, payments. So that it's not just all water funding, it's just the water bill funding. Okay, so uh, again, preliminary financial outlook for, for fiscal 18, it looks like uh, water board revenues are gonna come in at about $3.672 billion. Uh, our projected needs in fiscal 19 is 3.802 billion and uh, just, just a little bit of the breakdown on that. Um, water authority funds for, for debt service plus funds for cash, capital investment or defeasance. Uh, that's about 59% of our projected budget this year and it's gonna be roughly the same next year, just a, a slight increase in the overall dollar value. Uh, operations and maintenance, we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, increase of about four and a half percent, but some of those were, were new requirements um, that, that we got, and, and that's that increase. And then water board uh, and water utility direct expenses is, is about 3% increase uh, year over year. So I'm gonna turn out over now to Deputy Commissioner Seinfeld to just talk about a couple of other policy changes that uh, we're proposing. So basically a letter of authorization for my expediter friends here especially, we today will make you recertify those every year. And that's just pretty onerous because basically you're the same person authorized every year. So we're just gonna change that from one year to two years. So it'll be a recertification every two years. But even though it's every two years, the customer could call us within the two year period and say, revoke it, I've changed my management company or my other child is helping me. That's basically all this really is. And then the next one, title reads, all we're really doing here, before I even read this for you, and you all know what a title read. Someone is selling their property, so you get a title read, so when you go to closing, you understand this is what the water bill is, the old owner owns it, this is the new owner. If you read what's in our rate schedule today, it would require everybody to go into a, a borough office and do all this paperwork. We don't do that today. We allow you to call in, so we're just trying to match the process we do today that is more customer friendly for our customers. You call up, I need the title read, we manage what you need to do. We also have a process where sometimes you'll call in for a title read and it's too late. You should have called sooner. So we will still do a read for you, but it's not called a title read. And we'll get the read for you and send you a letter. There are other times when you call for the title read and it's not appropriate or is out of time and we don't tell you anything, we remain silent, now we are going to get back to you with a letter or an email just to say, this is why it wasn't possible. These changes are again just to become more customer friendly and more efficient and to reduce people. And then just finally a recap, uh, again, today's proposal is for a fiscal 19 
rate increase on, on water and, and, and sewer bills of 2.36%. Uh, and of course, we mentioned all the other affordability criteria as well. And, um, after two years of zeros, um, the system, you know, certainly as I described, has, has additional needs, and that's why the, uh, the reason for the, the request. Thank you. Commissioner, thank you. Um, are there questions? Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it as a board, the seriousness you take, the process, the, the thought that goes into it on our time, and we appreciate the thought and diligence on your staff. So we don't take for granted that you and your senior staff come to present this and really think it's a credit to your commitment to the great hearing process. Um, one, of, one of the questions I had looking at both the long-term control plan and you talked about increases uh, in needs from the FAD. Um, when you look at the increases, the 4.5% increase in O&M, how much of that is related to new requirements put on us by the state and federal, and how much of that is based on our kind of resorting or our capital expense allocation? Um, and then I'll, I'll follow a question on long-term control plans. So, so Member Free, thanks for the question. So of the $64 million in, in new O&M need, about $12 million is for the filtration of waves determination. Again, this, this uh, agreement that was reached back in December uh, with, with the state and the federal government. And about another 12 million goes towards uh, the, the, the adjustment where we were uh, capitalizing some of the repair work that we were doing, like for catch basins, and, and now it's, it's you know, as, as we've gotten guidance that, that needs to be expensed. So about 24 million of the 64 million goes to those two specific items. Um, and then there's a variety of, of new needs for, for the other 40 million. And, and those are related to? Yeah, water, wastewater, um, sewer main work. Okay. Um, some some is for the, the long-term capital plans where, where there's some funding needed to do studies, take, take uh, tests, samples. Um, and related to the long-term capital plans, uh, it's incredible to see the 4,000 green stormwater infrastructure installations that have been put in, some of which are quite large and some of which you go by and you don't even realize they're managing our water. Um, do you have a sense of, of what percentage of our stormwater drainage budget is going towards green infrastructure and how much of our stormwater is, is being actively managed by those types of installations? Yeah, that's a good question. We, we, we have um, about 4,000 assets uh, in the ground now. Our, our plan through the 10-year capital plan is to get to 10,000. Um, I don't have the number off the top of my head about uh, the, the, the 10-year plan. And just as far as managing uh, stormwater, they've actually done pretty well. We've had um, some early projections, and, and most of those assets have actually exceeded the amount of, of stormwater that they are collecting. So, again, that's the reason why we continue moving forward. Um, trash removal has been a challenge, but, but we've got some organized headcount to go out and, and maintain those assets. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to follow up and, and just get a sense of. Uh, what scale or percentage it represents uh, cost-wise and also water management-wise. That would be very helpful. John? Commissioner, sure, thank you so much. I also want to echo Adam's uh, comments. Um, it's a very thoughtful and comprehensive presentation. We're grateful for all the effort that goes into it and for your being here. I have a quick question that I had is just uh, a point of clarification for myself. The, uh, I assume that the proposed rate increase does not factor in the your customers, the, in terms of figuring out what the average is, does not factor in the customers who have a frozen minimum charge. Is that accurate? No, we, we, we've looked at needs for fiscal 19, um, and we have a, a pretty good estimate of folks who are on the minimum charge, um, and, and that's all factored in. What, what, I'm, what I mean is that is that if you were to you were to do an average of what the rate increase is, and you factored in the number of people who were paying zero percent increase, the average rate increase would actually be lower than 2.36, or is that, is, that, is that not the right way to look at it? No, that's because that, I'm, I'm sorry, Jonathan, yeah, the 2.36 is all-inclusive. 
So that takes into account what those revenue streams are going to be from all payers. So the fact that the minimum charge, you know, constituents will pay zero increase, that is factored into the 2.36 for the remaining balance. So actually, if you were to say that how much are you going to, if they were going to go up by the 2.36, it would be a lower rate across the board. So it would be, that would bring the rate down. Yes, the if we were to increase the, the if we were increasing the minimum charge, the overall rate would be lower. But 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 it'd be fractional. It would not be a large a large number at all. So the so the average increase is is in fact an average increase for those who are experiencing an increase, not for all payers. Correct. That is right. what they will see on their their bill sheet. And if we were to and if we were to factor the the um, uh, minimum rate charge, as you said, it would be it would be minimal, but uh, but. Yes, it would. And I, I mean, we could also, our rate consultant, and uh, Marcus from Amwalk is here. I don't know, Ben, if you want to address the question also for the members, so that for John and Ben. Well, the, the total dollar is from that class of customers. Well, the system as a whole is pretty small. So it, it would be very marginal. So um, the, the direct charges are covered for uh, where we have a long-standing agreement with um, other city agencies, which is primarily sanitation for uh, you know contributions towards their efforts, which is for uh, street sweeping and um, litter basket collection, because those efforts go to help alleviate you know this is, you know that that trash that would otherwise might wind up in the catch basins, you know, and then wind up at our plant. So. That's been going on for a number of years, and we probably pay about, I think it's 50 percent about of those charges for the citywide. The other part is also where we have an agreement with the fire department, where they um, work for us and do uh, the hydrant inspections. So they have a regular routine cycle that they go through to make sure that all our hydrants are operational and in good state. And if the repairs need to be needed, we report those in. So you know, of course, it's beneficial to both them and us. But no, more so for us because of, you know a broken fire hydrant could have a tremendous leak impact as well. There are some other minor charges, mainly for uh, the uh, the nice wind system, which is the one that does the uh, the trans transmission of the meter reads to the uh, to the um, uh, back to uh, central, and so that we can then have the uh, the automated reading meter reads. Just the electronic system. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And does it also include the uh, water board staff? That would be under that um, category, I think, as if you look on slide. Go to slide 23, and if you go to the third line, you'll see there, Water Board and Water Authority Direct Expenses. So that includes whatever are those charges that are managed by the Water Board itself. As well as you know, for the Water Finance Authority, which you know manages all the uh, the bonding and investment you know functions for the system. And and that I'm sorry, so um, that that one direct expenses is what I was asking about. That, that those include the fire department expenses and the sanitation. No, 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 those would. I'm sorry, and that's let me clarify because those would be up in the operations and maintenance expenses. So yeah, okay, I'm sorry. So that's that's embedded in the operations and maintenance. I'm so immersed in it. I guess. No, 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 no worries, no worries. <laughs> This is, from a board perspective, this is really, this is AWR, pass through the charges of AWR. The water board is 50, 110, AWR is about 45 for that. There's no board staff salaries. The remaining five is like the contract of city bank, green consultants, water conservation consultant. I see. Yeah. And on Thank the you. authority side, the expenses associated with uh, credit support for our over rate debt, uh, national advisory fee, I appreciate that. I just wanted to clarify because um, I, I commend um, our team on how cleanly we run and how efficiently we run, and I uh, just wanted to make sure that it was clear that uh, we weren't spending on it. Unfortunately for you guys, aren't spending on it. No. <laughs> 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 it, may, it may be worth every penny, but uh, <laughs> I will. 
I'll point out that too, I think the authority on their side for the bond runs their stuff very efficiently and tightly as well. So, you know, I think the scale of what our bonding and the, you know the, the management of those are very well run out of, you know, the overture of the executive director is here as well if she needs this because but you know in terms of their sister, you know, responsibility to the water board as the water uh, the water you know, finance authority. I, I, and I just wanted to highlight that because the, I thought the direct expenses might be construed as um, no, no, and I, but I, I didn't realize that you know that you know the, like I'm so immersed in it, the direct is just part of the owner. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Olga, forgive me for not uh, introducing you earlier. The executive director of the finance authority. Uh, I, I had. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll talk to you, please. <laughs> Very kind. Um, we're we're going to borrow. $8 billion over the course of the next four years, two or so billion dollars a year. Of course, it's never a straight line like that. Um, are there going to be refundings as a part of that? Are we refunding variable rate debt? Are we, are we thinking about how to deal with that $31 billion to, to, to reduce the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the interest rate expenses? Right, so we conservatively don't budget for the fundings, but on an annual basis, uh, when the market presents that opportunity to us, of course, we take advantage of that, and that has been very beneficial to the system in recent years, in particular when the interest rate environment has been very favorable. So we uh, were able to uh, realize very significant debt service savings. Um, uh, and that, of course, translated into lower debt service costs and lower rates for the rate payers. But conservatively, we don't budget ahead for that. So that is only reflected when savings are realized. Okay, thank you. Well, one other question. Uh, um, uh, we, uh, oh, okay, this one isn't for you, it's yeah. for, it's for Joe, I think. Um, we, we've had two successive fiscal years of no rate increases. The, 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 the money that we use to serve, the money that services our debt comes from, of, of course, the rate payers. Correct. They pay uh, has there been any impact on our ability to service that debt uh, over the course of the last two years in the absence of rate increases? No, we, because I think one of the things, particularly because of the um, return of the rental payment, yes. you know, that in specifically allowed a cash infusion of about a quarter billion dollars, I think, would be at this point in time. So with that, working with the recovery consultant, also working with the authority, we were able to manage that cash flow to be able to, you know, also work with the, the debt structure as well as the owner needs of the system to be able to say, look, how do we want to make this so that we could, you know, both make sure that the needs of the system are being met in terms of what are the capital programs that have to be in the capital projects that have to go forward. Also looking and saying to what extent can some of that be used for rate making. And, you know, of course, it also like when the mayor did do the credit, that was another, you know, you know acknowledgement to single family homeowners to say, here's an opportunity for us to also return something to one of our, you know, larger, you know, pools of uh, um, rate payers that haven't benefited from some of the other things that, you know, go on that we've been doing in other credit programs. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, two, two more follow-up questions. One, which is my perennial favorite, uh, so I, I prize consistency. Uh, looking at the, the overall rate structure for both conservation pricing and uh, granite charge or stormwater charge related to purpose area uh, surfaces for properties, I know that one of the things that's made that difficult is our legacy billing system and the inability to do that. Now having gone through work with the Detroit Water and Sewage Department, which has a legacy system even older than ours, um, I recognize the enormous challenges of trying to, to match multiple records. Wanted to check in on, on the status of the update of the customer billing system and you know any thoughts DEP has had or further studies that are going on to look at uh, the ability to, to try to use the rates to better align incentives for changes in behavior. So, so you talk about, about the billing system. Yeah, yeah. I love to talk about the billing system. <laughs> 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 but uh, we actually have a selected vendor and we're in negotiations right now and if things go as planned, our new system should be in place no later than the summer of 2020. Okay, oh wow. Yeah, which is pretty exciting. We're very excited for that. But in the meantime, studies do go on to begin to look at 
uh, different rate structures. I will say though, um, honestly, we're beginning to close down any new big changes into our system because we can't go forward into implementing a new system once you're changing it. Right. Pretty excited. So 2020, will which, which? I think that's like the yeah. latest. So I mean, okay. right now, once we finish our contract negotiation, we get approvals, and that's somewhat of a lengthy process. Where it's 20 month, a 20 month implementation. But Cecil McVanster, our CIO, and myself, we believe that that's the outside, and I think Perfect. we may be able to get it accomplished sooner. And one of the things that will, you know, with the mayor released the budget yesterday, a component that would, will show up in the executive budget and it's incorporated into the rate proposal here is the capital piece of that um, uh, the billing system, which I believe we have budgeted at $32 million, as well as one of the expense items that the commissioner was speaking about is the incremental cost of also having to stand up that billing system as well. You know, getting that transition, getting the staff trained, getting, you know, the, the, the service agreements, having one group in place. So it's a, you know, it's a, not a big piece, but it's gonna be a very important piece, especially for, you know, us as the board of to be able to know that we're gonna to continue to have and particularly what you're talking about, um, Member Free, you think that going forward and having that capacity to be able to look at new and creative ways that we can look at building that we haven't been able to do because we have such an old legacy system. And that's why we're really excited about the, you know, the potential vendor as we go through these negotiations because it looks like it'll be a really robust platform for us to be able to do things like that. And just a commitment, um, I was actually asked to potentially give a presentation on that today, but this was too important. But I will be back here at one point to give you an update on the journey that we've had so far. And I'll be I was actually going to ask you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. That'd be true. No, and I, and I continue, and I know this is something we talk about and that, that DP has done studies on, continue to see as more and more cities are moving to more creative ways of using their, their billing system and structures to meet policy goals and provide greater predictability and flexibility for customers um, continue to be an interest here uh, for us. My, my other question is just related, I think, building on uh, Jonathan's comments about the um, minimum water charge. If we could just get an estimate of what the costs are for each of the affordability programs and what we think the impact would be. I know it's de minimis, um, particularly for the re leak repair credit. Um, is there a time or a monetary cap on the yeah. credit customers? Yes, yeah. Yeah. there is. Yeah. Uh, so, go ahead. So um, <laughs> it's only within 120 days if you reported it, otherwise you can't be in it. Okay. And the credit itself is actually the incremental difference between what you should have used versus what you did use and only up to 50% of that difference. Perfect. And you need to also demonstrate that you've made those repairs necessary to prevent that from happening. It's about one and a half million dollars you can it. So it's not a very okay. But it's been very important, as you can imagine, to you know, consider that has gone through that. Yes. Um, and we'll, we'll get the breakdown. I think, I know for the end of the multi-family program, that's capped at $10 million. Uh, I don't, I think the other credit program. The H-Web is about six and a half. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see these. That'd be terrific. Thank you very much. Are there other questions? Then I will join so if you want to all the board members and thank you. And I, was, Mr. Okay. Chair, so I think that, you know, the important thing to now point out is that we will be noticing that by per, you know, uh, public hearings, um, it's up on the board there now for everyone to see. It's in the members' package as well. You know, it's always a pleasure to have as many members as possible to come to the hearings as well, to see, as you know, to hear what the public has to say. And then the expectation is, and I know what Elmar sent out the calendar date, that we would look to adopt on the first. You know, once we get the feedback, the board has had a good time to consider, you know, to think of recommendation from there. All right. uh, and as I was about to say, uh, Commissioner, thank you very, very much for being thank here. You. Your dedication to this process is something that, uh, that, that we applaud. And I'm very grateful to be able to pick up the phone and call you when I need to. And, and you've always been very responsive. Thank you. Thank you very much. It does work. Collaboration. It, it, it works well. Joseph, thank you. 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 Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any other business to come before this board? Uh, hearing none, may I have a motion, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
this is the first presentation that the board has had on the proposed rate increases and the reasons for the rate increase. Uh, the objective that we have is to keep an open mind as we begin the hearing process in the, in the five boroughs. Uh, no one here has decided whether the 2.36% recommendation uh, is actually going to going to rise and fly or fall and die. Uh, what, what we'd like very much for you to do is to participate in the program, in, in the hearing process. Uh, if, if you have the, uh, the time and the availability, we'd like to fill up those hearing rooms and, and make sure that people have every opportunity possible to ask questions about why we're doing this or why we want to do this or why staff wants to do this. Um, so, so having said all of that, please be participatory. We, we'd like to see out there. <laughs> Thank you. It's a team effort. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Um, if there is no further business to come before this board, may I have a motion, please adjourn. So Thank you, John. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All in favor, please indicate with aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.